हरि ओम स्टार्ट विद प्रेयर ओम समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतं करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुर माता पिता बंधु सखात्मे विद्यादेविंग दि फंडमेंटल ऑफ अद्वैत वेदांत एंड इन द प्रोसे we are looking at the criticism of advaita by other acharyas particularly bhagwan ramanuja and his sri bhasha of the vama sutra he criticizes taking advaita as a puro paksha as but lagu puro paksha and maha puro paksha in that maha puro paksha he takes the avijja aspect of it why avijja is so important we mentioned that avijja is the moola vidya according to advaita where that is a cause for the creation itself now how can avijja ignorance be a cause for creation and advaita vedanta provides simple example when i do not know something i project something other than itself so do not know ignorance is coming from the tamo guna and projection comes from the rajo guna that's how the discussion started and now we are looking at more deeply that the locus of avidya and so on so forth so the criticism of bhagwan ramanuja rests on the basic principle of the the who has avidya and what's the difference between avidya and maya so difference between avidya and maya is also a confusion between in the in within the advaita where the vivarna school differ from the bhamati school so in the bhamati school they mention that avidya is locust in the jiva whereas maya is from the ishvara point whereas the from the point of vivarna says the we have the same problem of the locus of avidya because the avidya is before, beginningless and jiva came later or jiva is after the avidya so therefore you cannot have the locus of jiva uh, avidya as, as a jiva as the locus all these things we went through because this is a this is a constant the criticism as well as as commentaries and co commentaries and using uh, navya nyaya the the new new logic there are lot of the hair splitting arguments on this but we should have a clear understanding where avidya is from the point of myself if i don't know that i am brahman then i am the locus of avidya from the point of yourself if you do not know that you are brahman then you are the locus of avidya so each jiva becomes a locus of avidya but avidya generates the because of avidya we act Uh, and the karma becomes important and karma means i become the vasanas and the vasanas become the the creative force for my next life that means i am born because of karma so if you look at the whole scenario says the karma is the basis for creation karma means the purvajanma karma or the vasanas or basis for my creation purvajanma karma is basis for your creation and the whole universe is because of the lord who creates the universe in such a way that it can be the karma, the, the vasanas of all jivas can be exhausted that means i am seeking an environment conducive to my likes and dislikes you are seeking an environment conducive to your likes and dislikes like the whole universe is environment conducive to exhaust the vasanas of all the beings in that so from our point we try to differentiate maya and avidya slightly although they are one in the same form the maya is that power 
of the Lord because it is a Parameshwara Shakti and the Lord doesn't have avidya. So Lord is Sarvagnya. Sarvagnya means he is all knowing. Therefore we cannot associate Lord with the avidya. At the same time he is having a Maya. So Maya is essentially a power and that power is used to create and the creation is done by not haphazardly or because of his Leela. Leela means his play, he can play whatever he wants it's not that he is using the vasanas of all beings put together or the karma or the purva janma karma of all the beings put together as the driving force and that itself is called maya so now who, who has avidya if you're talking about the total avidya of all beings put together which is a cause for the total actions which are the total vasanas and that we call it a maya that is called avyakta namni paramesha shakti. So we are differentiating slightly maya and avidya. Avidya manifests in terms of the vasanas and the vasanas are the root cause for the creation. So essentially avidya in a way is root cause for creation. But at the same time we are bringing Ishvara and we don't want to put avidya for the Ishvara. Ishvara is same as Brahman with the Maya Shakti. So Brahman doesn't have avidya in a way because it is avidya is locused on the jivas only. But some total of all jivas put together is the total and that is called is Maya. So their undifferentiated ignorance of all beings put together, you can say, because ignorance cannot be differentiated because it's ignorance. So if I can differentiate and distinguish, then I am trying to make it a, a knowledge out of ignorance. So essentially, the avyaktam means unmanifested state or a potential state, and that's exactly the same state when I'm going to disleave state that's the whole thing of subject object distinctions are folded all i know is i don't know in that i don't know i don't know neither the world nor myself also so that is the state of understanding now there i cannot differentiate in my deep sleep state is that i don't know is i don't know only myself or i don't know but everybody else what about the the other people other people are also only objects of my knowledge only. From my point, I am the only subject, everything else is object. All that is implied in understanding when says when the jnanam comes, who realizes? I realize or the whole universe realizes. If the whole universe is having a vidya, even if I real if I remove my avidya, the still avidya will be total, will be there, and therefore will not be any realization until everybody realizes. So all these confusing arguments are presented both in the Satadushani of Vedanta Deshika and some in the in the uh, Sudarshana Suri who also criticizes the Advaita Vedanta. But all these criticisms are because of not having a clear the understanding or clear vision of what Advaita says or distorting the vision of Advaita and then criticizing also. So we have to have a clear understanding from our point without getting confused by their criticisms because they are packaging the criticism in such a way that the, the Purva Paksha is put it down and so that Swapaksha can be, Swapaksha means their own methodology or their own model can be appreciated. So we have to be careful in terms of analysis wise what is right as because we are interested in not what Ramanuja says or what Shankara says also. What we are interested in is what we are interested in is only what is the truth. And that's the scientific approach. So we take consideration and see what is much more real or much more conducive in terms of scripture because scripture alone is a pramana. They also use a scripture. But what in the scriptures we already mentioned, they are Abheda Vakyas and the Abheda Vakyas. They are one, Vakyas, that means they are statements that are differentiating everything. That's called the Abheda Vakyas. And they are statements which is undifferentiated, homogeneous, pure, existent consciousness alone is the truth, is also there. Now, which one is more important or which one is the superior statements is does that interpretation differs from Advaita Vedanta versus the Visistha Advaita and Advaita.
So now we have to select which is really important based on the analysis and based on explanation of each one, considering both of them or all of them and see what is really makes more sense to us also. Even though it's essentially, the, it is beyond the logic, yet still scriptural, scriptures or scriptural statements are logical only and therefore we still have to use logic. And so if it's Shruti and then Anubhava and Yukti, all three are required. Shruti is, is the scriptural statement, Anubhava, my own experience of three states of consciousness and also logic has to be used in order to make a self-consistent analysis to arrive at what is the real truth. So we follow that methodology. So question that we are asking is, is Maya different from Avidya? This is a fundamental question, both from the Bhamati point and the Vivarana school, they themselves have disagreements in that, but we should be clear irrespective of who is right there. We should know what is involved. So since Maya is Parameshwara Shakti and Parameshwara does not have any avidya because that's what we define Parameshwara. He is called Sarvajna. He knows everything. So he knows what is the truth also. Therefore, we cannot provide avidya for him. Therefore, we do not say that Lord has avidya, but Lord has a Maya as his set. So we are now differentiating slightly Maya and avidya. But avidya, Maya is nothing but expression of or manifestation of avidya into plurality. So Maya is the same as a Prakruti. And Prakriti has Trigunatmikam and in the Trigunatmikam we have Sattva Guna, Rajoguna and Tamoguna and the Tamoguna aspect is Avidya. So now we are trying to differentiate below Maya, we have three Gunas as though below Maya, it has three Gunas, three properties as though and in that we say that one is the Tamasic which is essentially ignorance involved, rajasic, there is a creative power involved and also sattvic, the knowledge is also involved in that. This is not knowledge of Brahman, but it's knowledge of that counters the, the tamoguna. So all these things we need to be clear when we look in terms of what is realization or what is realization, what is self-realization, all this should be very crystal clear. That's what is Advaita Vedanta should be. And this is advanced Advaita Vedanta. So before we proceed any further, we should have clear understanding of what exactly Maya means and what exactly Avijja is. So in principle, from my point, the Maya is the power of the Lord who makes things possible, that which is not possible otherwise. And what are the possibility? That which is Brahman, which is infinite, which cannot undergo any differentiation, is making it to become into different only for using the using the vasanas to exhaust. Therefore, in the eighth chapter of Gita, it says it is because of karma. The creation is because of karma. So creation is because of Maya, your creation is because of Avidya, is because of because of karma. So all these things should be clear. Karma is result of avidya and avidya is, is, because, is a beginningless and avidya doesn't have it Ishwara. So at the same time we call it Ishwara is the one who gives the results of the action. So that's how we define Ishwara now. That's why Bhagavan, Rama just, Bhagavan Ramana says in the beginning of the Upadhisasara, he starts with Karturagnaya Prapyate Palam Karma kim param, karma tad jadam. So, kartru agnya. Kartru means creators. Agnya means because of his agnya. That means because of his rules or because of his uh, force and because of his criteria. He is the one, the results are being given. So, he is the one who gives the results of the action essentially. So, here the results are, actions are in a potential form and that is called the vasanas of the total vasanas of all beings put together is the the source that which has to give the results for that. So therefore he is providing an environment conducive to exhaust those vasanas. And that power through which he makes it possible from the avyaktam that means unmanifested vasanas into a manifested forms is what is called maya.
Now, look at the same analysis. This is how scriptures also is self-consistent in this. So, from the Bhagavan point, Bhagavan point, when the creation is starting, and says from the, in the in the in the in the eighth chapter itself, says when the, the Brahmaji, when his creation starts, the day starts and day ends. So the day starting from the from the morning, he starts creating, and in the in the end of the night, he also goes to sleep. When Brahmaji goes to sleep, what happens? And that's what is called the pralayam. Pralayam means the whole universe goes in an unmanifested form that is the total vasanas form and in the potential form until the, the, create, the Brahmaji gets up and use that vasanas to create a new cycle of creation. Just as when we go to sleep in the, in the deep sleep state and we call it, that is called Laya, we fold everything of all our vasanas and the mind and everything in, in a potential form and there in the deep sleep state, in our deep sleep state, there is no differentiation of any kind. So there is no subject-object distinctions because they are all in potential. I may be a chemistry professor or a physics professor or I may be knowing everything or I may be a dull, but I may be ignorant completely, but yet in the deep sleep state, it's pure knowledge of the absence of everything. This is from the point of individual, it's called Laya. From the point of totality, it's called the the Pralaya. But in the Laya, when I am in the deep sleep state, from my point, there is no difference of Jiva, Jagat and Ishwara also. So, what is there? Only I am there sleeping very well with nothing other than ignorance and the absence of the duality, absence of subject, object, duality. Therefore, there is no suffering involved. So, I am using all these words because when we go back into what is moksha, all this becomes important. So, when I say I am happy in the deep sleep state because I have the absence of suffering, that's called happy there. So, it's not a positive happiness, it's only absence of suffering. Why is absence of suffering? Because there is no duality whatsoever. There is no subject-object duality. Means, whenever there is a duality, there is a suffering. This is an important statement because when we talk about moksha or, or liberation, if there is any difference, then we are again back to the world. This, is, this has to be clear because Advaitic moksha differs from the Visistha Advaitic moksha or Advaitic moksha also in this respect. That's why we are emphasizing this is the experience, anubhava is important in the analysis of the truth also. Shastram, anubhavam and yukti also. So what is the Anubhavam says, in the deep sleep state, I have no difference of subject-object, non-duality is as though experience because it's the absence of his experience and because of the absence, everybody is happy there because absence of duality. At the same time, I am not conscious of my own presence also. So therefore, there is ignorance is involved because I don't know myself that Mula Vidya is still there and the vasanas are all are still there karana is there because they again try to project back and whatever that i remembered is projected back in the day as soon as i get up i am back all with all my chemistry knowledge or whatever the knowledge i went to into deep sleep state all that will come back all the yesterday's experiences previous day experiences all the recordings everything comes back but during the deep sleep state it's all folded so, but I exist there because I say I slept very well. I slept very well because I didn't have any duality there. I am enjoying myself. So, whether it's a king or a pauper, everybody enjoys deep sleep state. And therefore, which implies that, that I, my own ignorance is folded. But in that ignorance, I cannot differentiate what is my ignorance versus others' ignorance because others are also folded there. Because when I fold everything, there is no others also because subject object is also gone. But I am the only one there, as from my point. In the same way, when you look at pralayam, the same thing happens from the Lord. He goes to sleep and the Brahmaji goes to sleep and all the vasanas put together and mind, subtle body, cross body, everything goes into, 
in a subtle form and whatever the subtle form is in the potential form and that becomes a cause for the creation for the next day when Brahmaji gets up. So each day of Brahmaji is involves many yugas and all that, all this being discussed in the Vedanta. But from my point, the analogy has to be very clear that when we say Maya is a Parameshwara Shakti, that which cause of which he makes unmanifest into manifest and that all Acharyas agree. But unmanifest is nothing but the ignorance in a potential form. That one we have to be agreed. That's where the Advaita Vedanta comes. Even the Visistha Advaita agrees that that karma is a problem. And what is the karma of Kalim Karma comes from Kartrutu Bahom. That means the notion of that I am a doer. That means Karta is there. So, which is the beginning? Whether the how did karma come, come into picture without the Karta? And without the Karta, the how did how did Karta got into created? Because the Purojanma karma is involved. So this is again vicious cycle, and they are ready to agree that this is a beginningless cycle, and you cannot ask the question. Which came first? The karma came first or the karta came first? But they ask the same question with respect to the avidya because avidya is nothing but manifested as the karma. So the, the, their, this, their uh, arguments against Advaita cannot have any validity because they have to use the same beginningless cycle anyway and it is anirvachaniyam because we cannot say which one is the beginning. When, when Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta says that it is anirvachaniyam, what it means is only it is neither real nor unreal. But that they also criticize because if it is not real, it has to be unreal. If it is not unreal, it has to be real. But even that criticism is invalid because they themselves agree, that means particularly the Visistha Advaita, they themselves agree a degree of different realities because even Brahman is transcendental reality, that which is called Nitya Vibhuti, and that which is beyond this, and therefore there is absolutely real and there is a relatively real. Gold is absolutely real, ring and a bangle are, are relatively real. That's exactly what we call relatively real, is called Vyavaharika Satyam and that's called Mitya. Why we call Mitya? Because from the point of infinity, nothing, no creation can come out. So if there is a differences, it's only apparent differences, but not really real differences. And apparent differences are looked as a real for the one who does not know this difference. And therefore, the root cause for our samsara is become essentially the, the, the avidya. Now we are trying to distinguish now the Ishwara Srishti coming from the Ishwara and the Jiva Srishti coming from the Jiva and where Avidya comes from the Jiva point uh, or his, his locus and also the locus of Avidya of the total Avidya of all put people together causing for the Ishwara Srishti and when realization occurs what exactly gets eliminated because this is also one of the comments of Bhagavan Ramanuja and we will go into that details in the next talk. With this we will start. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om